Hey guys, welcome to a new Dungeon Defenders 2 video. I'm your host, Mr. Peter, and let's learn about Flame Auras. First of all, there are tons of Flame Aura builds, and I can't say which one is better, but I can recommend the build that I've used from day one to where I am right now, or at least guide you to an aura that you're comfortable with. Before we talk about shards and mods, let's start from the beginning. This is our Flame Aura. Flame Auras are AoE auras, meaning they are designed to wave clear. Now the question is, how do we get the Flame Aura better? The most important rule of tower defense games are maxing the attack rate of a tower to maximize the tower's strength and capability. In order to do this, we must go to our inventory, ascension tab, and put 20 points onto our defense rate. Of course, put the remaining points onto our flame aura and also put in onto crit damage and crit chance. But we still haven't hit our max defense rate. There are two ways of doing this. Option one, get a 10 out of 10 defense rate mod and slip it into your medallion. Option two, we get a gilded defense rate shard. To get a gilded defense rate shard, you can farm Chaos 4 and try to find it, or you can go to the Grandmaster and buy 11 Defense Ray Shards using Defender Medals. Merge them together and you get a Gilded Defense Ray Shard. The easiest option is Option 2, as finding a 10 out of 10 Defense Ray mod is very difficult, and it's longer to reroll the mod too. We have a Gilded Defense Ray Shard here, and we're going to put it onto our Relic. As you can see, it now has max attack rate. Awesome! Now the next thing we need to do is give it power and give it range. Before we forget we can increase more of its size by going into our ascension tab again and adding more points onto our gambit range. We have destruction found in chaos 1 which provides us defense power and we have deadly strikes found in chaos 3 which provides defense range. You do not need to gild these shards at all but having them gilded gives us extra stats which is nice. Now this is our new and improved aura. A lot bigger and a lot stronger. It has damage because of destruction, it's consistent because of defense rate and it has a juicy size because of deadly strikes. Now we're done with the shard section, let's talk about mods. These are the mods that I recommend to use, anti-melee, anti-chaos and defense range. The reason why I chose anti-mods is because they deal additional percentage damage. Example, if an enemy is a melee unit, they deal 56.13% more damage. Same principle with all the other anti-mods. I chose anti-melee because majority of the units are melee. And I chose anti-chaos because there are 7 different types of chaos units that will always show up. It is also important to note that if they are melee and a chaos unit, they will take percentage damage from both mods. Meaning, Lady Orcs, Cyborgs and Assassins will take 56.13% from Anti-Melee and 56.13% from Anti-Chaos. Which means the Flame Aura is going to do tons of damage to them. Which is great! This is the Flame Aura build that I recommend to start to build to, as it helped me through their Chaos Expeditions, Mastery, Primes and also Climb on Onslaught. While climbing Onslaught, every time you beat a floor, the units become stronger and tankier, which means we need to make a counter for all units. What I've done is made different variation of this aura, because not every unit is going to be a melee or a chaos unit. On this one, I've done anti-orc and anti-melee, as orc units are very tanky and have large health states. I've also made anti-range and anti-support, but this is way down the road, it's not important right now, so let's move on. Let's go back from the start. Let's say you don't have a Gilded Defense Rate Shard, however, you have a 10 out of 10 Defense Rate mod. This is an example of what you should build to. Same principle, but instead of Defense Range, you'll have a 10 out of 10 Defense Rate mod. Because you have a 10 out of 10 Defense Rate mod, you can remove this Defense Rate Gilded Shard and instead use Vampiric Empowerment for extra damage. This is an good alternative as you've reduced the size of the aura just a tiny bit for extra damage. Like I said earlier, there are tons of flame aura builds and lots of different combinations. Like this one, anti-melee, tenacity and defense rate. There is no right answer, but I highly recommend this build as it's helped me from the start of DD2 to where I am right now. And the best part of this build is that you don't need a 10 out of 10 mods for this. You can start off with a 5 or even a 4 and eventually 
you'll find a 10 out of 10 and replace the mod. Hopefully this is giving you more of an understanding of how flame roar works and how to build a flame roar. Before we end this video, we're going to jump into a Chaos 7 expedition to show you guys the flame roar in action. And welcome back guys, we're on the lost dungeon map Unholy Catacombs. We're going to be using our recommended flame roar, anti-chaos, anti-melee and defense range. I'm just going to use flame roars to show you guys how strong this flame roar build is. To be honest, I haven't done just flame roars since like forever. <laughs> and I'm not entirely sure how far these units can go. So we're going to just place as many as we can. And place one up here just in case they slip through. As you can see, the auras cover a huge area, and I love that. Alright, let's do this. Wow, I'm really underestimating my aura here. Um, you see that group of Lady Orcs? They died instantly because of our anti-mods. That was really quick and really smooth. Let's let's just keep going. I don't know what boss it's going to be, but I do want to know how far this boss can get. What's great about having big auras is that they also attack air units, which is cheeky of them. The boss should be coming out soon. Yeah, I don't think it's going to kill it. Whoops, I missed my missile. <laughs> oh. That was a perfect example of why we need anti-mods. No matter how strong your aura is, if you don't have an anti-mod for that specific unit, they're going to slip through. This happens majority of the time on Onslaught. Hopefully we get a melee boss and we can um, compare how far this boss will get. Yeah, Unholy Catacombs is my go-to map because it's easy to do and the map gives us clusters. Clusters are materials, they can help us upgrade our relics and in the future, we're going to need a lot of them. We should be getting two bosses on this wave. So we have a cannon ogre and a task guard. Yeah, compared to a quibbly, it didn't go too far. Cannon ogres are slow, 
If they had speed of the Quigley, it would definitely got to the crystal. Alright, just taking a sneak peek on what boss we're going to have next. Yeah, you can see they're dying very quickly. That's exactly what a flame aura should be doing. Wave clean as much as it can. Again, we have a tough guard. We already know how far he can go, so let's watch the other boss instead. Oh, assassin. Look at that. Died in a few seconds. And the skeleton boss didn't go that far too. Let me shoot this unit so he can die. All right, we're on the last wave, so let's get right into it. On the last wave, there should be three bosses that come out. Yeah, I highly recommend this build as it's awesome at doing its job. Again, this aura works on mastery, primes, and onslaught. So we have two ogres, which should die, and we have Malpheus. Surprisingly, these auras killed Malpheus very quickly. Alright, there you go guys, hopefully this has visually shown you the flame aura's potential. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more DD2 content. For our next video, we'll be talking about lightning auras. See you then.